Will, any amendments, David? No amendments. All right, why don't we move to announcements? So just a couple um, <coughs> quick announcements. Um, City Fest, as we reported last time, is still ongoing, and I know there was a question <coughs> around, um, this is on August 15th, mm -hmm. and questions on whether or not the board maybe wanted to have a, a presence at, at City Fest. And I know, Elizabeth, you have a little bit of an update on that. Yes, I did talk to the um, Rotary folks who are organizing that at, at Patrick's suggestion, and um, they're about half full in their kind of what they call their vendor tent. Um, so they would make a table available to us. The fee is $50. The, um, the, it, the, it would be a table and two chairs. The time that they want it staffed would be uh, noon, and the event goes actually till about 9.30 in the evening, but it would be up to us how long we'd want to staff it. Um, but uh, I, uh, they had a meeting tonight, and so I did, I did ask them just to kind of give an indication that we might have an interest in that. Um, but that would be an opportunity for us, among other things, to kind of seek community feedback on uh, the topic that we've just been discussing on master planning and visioning, um, as well as others that we might want to include um, over the next couple of board meetings. So I just wanted to get an indication of interest, and we can ask David to secure that spot for us, and we can worry about staffing maybe a little bit later. Any? Yes, I would be interested in us doing that. Okay. When Any comments? Uh, August 15th. Mm -hmm. I won't be there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would say I, it sounds good. I'll be taking a kid to college as well, but okay. Martin is happy to do it, though. <laughs> okay, so we'll sign Martin up sign for up. nine <laughs> hours. <laughs> uh, but it sounds like we should try to do something there, yeah. and we can discuss it further, but if we can maybe secure that spot, that would be great. Mm -hmm. And it does sound from... Um, John, the organizer at the Rotary, it does sound like the city has several um, tables represented, including the Energy Prize um, and, and others. So um, I, I think having school representation there would make a lot of sense. Yeah. And it looks like a great event. They've got a lot of things planned. So, great. The other thing <laughs> I wanted to just allude to, it wasn't it that long ago, I think shortly after or before our last meeting, the um, <coughs> H uh, 361, which then went into Act 46, which is on the whole con consolidation school funding work. There was a series of meetings that, that VSA and VSBA and VPA were putting out, and so they've, they've provided some additional dates. And so I'll just hand this around to you. Um, if you would like to go, you can certainly let myself and the line know, and we can sign you up. We would like, you know, I'm planning on going to one of them, and they do encourage kind of board representation as well, so they're not, you know, doing just, you know, um, kind of individual organizational structures, so that's kind of <coughs> their, their desire. So there's a front and back to your page. Um, do you know which one you're going to? I don't, and I, I kind of, I think I'm pretty open and I'll, and if there's more than one of you that would like to go, obviously, um, we can be a little bit careful of the number, but mm -hmm. we can work that out too. So, that's all I have for announcements. All right. Any other announcements from board members? All right. We'll move on to master planning, financial stewardship, and city and school collaboration. So, master planning and visioning. Obviously, you've just been inundated with an hour and a half <laughs> or more of master planning and visioning conversation. And um, I think it's safe to say that the task force has you've appropriately concluded their work with the exception of the final report. I do think it's upon us now and the city council on their side. <coughs> Certainly between the city and the school, as you know, we've continued to have meetings with both um, um, Pat Nowak, Kevin Dorn, myself, and Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And you know, this, is, <coughs> this has been a, a big part of our discussions. But I do think you know, some next steps are gonna be important and I certainly wanna get it right on these next steps on behalf of you, the board. I certainly, I've begun to draft up some backwards planning ideas. I've had some conversations with Kevin. Kevin and Elizabeth and Pat, we've identified that the city has some things that are forthcoming for them that are going to require going to the, to the voters. Um, I think it's really critically important that we get that 
combined with where we are and what we're thinking so that there's coordination and clarity around what we're going to be asking our community. You hate to go out and say they're going to go to the voters, you know, these four times or these three times, mm -hmm. and that we're going to then go out an additional time, you know, and not have that coordinated. Uh, I think they get it, but we certainly get it. Um, so that coordinated with all of the other backwards planning that needs to happen to get you to a place of deciding what would you what do you think we need to do so do I understand do I understand that this calendar will be over several years could be could be, could be. yeah I mean I, I, I <laughs> that with the amount of things that are occurring I, I could definitely see well, just, again as the report does phasing three phases or four phases of of work and backwards planning that you may tweak along the way I would do some some work for you but again I'm really just wanting given what you've heard you still haven't seen the final report kind of some next step directions so I'm not going off in in places that you would like me not to I, I have some fundamental questions that keep recurring about this process and um, with a lot of respect for the colleagues that we have on the City Council it seems like our our tasks and our responsibilities to the community are pretty different in this within this subject and I feel like while I understand you working in tandem with them on a lot of a lot of these issues at least so we're informed I'm not sure I understand where the line is drawn in terms of decision making for the educational process and what's best for the city because that it may be that those are not those don't go together yeah and I think you know some of the discussion Julie has really centered around um, it will be the board's responsibility to articulate an aspirational vision for whether it's five years ten years twenty years it's that's going to be our job mm -hmm. I think one of the things that we need to put on our list of things to do is articulate the base case as well and just say look if if a status quo option and I think we heard it from several audience members tonight in the status quo this is what you're likely to be looking at in terms of ongoing investments where we are going to see a ramp up of preventative maintenance and replacement investments just by virtue of the age of the buildings and on bigger ticket items the same way we're seeing ADA compliance issues as well so that's one component but you know history is going to be the best predictor of the future as it relates also to um, to uh, compensation and benefits for instance so I think we need to paint a status quo scenario and just say this is kind of a 10-year look at what property taxes are likely to do independent of any state or federal activity and then kind of paint a vision for this is based on whatever the variables are their equity demographics a lot of the I think it's up to us to determine with community feedback what the priorities are in terms of painting that aspirational vision but then to sort of associate a cost with that mm -hmm. and the trade-off being you know if you're if it's our if it's our recommendation based on community feedback and kind of the baseline cost and the and the net difference of an investment then what um, you know what's the recommendation to the community the on the council side um, there are a number of activities largely associated with the TIF district um, that might impact timing but I, I don't um, you know I'll, I'll speak for myself I don't think we can make a decision with for for our shared taxpayer or you know that doesn't include potentially some offset of mm -hmm. the TIF district mm -hmm. for instance so that's not going to be our responsibility to determine what that is mm -hmm. all we can do is articulate here's our baseline here's a here's a potential future vision um, and then if if there's an offset or if there's some pro and con that's associated from the city that includes investments 
a, from a civic standpoint, like a library or community center, mm -hmm. then I think that picture has to be painted for the, um, the common taxpayer. Um, and, you know, the, I think the onus is to be as close to accurate as we can in painting that picture, but I, I think my feeling is that the report we got is the fodder that we need to kind of, um, you know, uh, digest as a group mm -hmm. to kind of come out with what that what that to do or that next list to do to do items that we have responsibility for, mm -hmm. um, and then you know we'll work with the city on their part of it. But if we were to present, if if the city did nothing, for instance, we might pre be presenting something in a vacuum, but then it has to stand on its own. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so I, I appreciate what you're saying. I just think we can't take on a bigger job than we have responsibility for, but balanced by the fact that we share, or we serve the, a common taxpayer, a common community. And there may be some positive trade-offs of city activity or vice versa, or mm -hmm. school activity sure. that should be presented in a total picture. Yeah. So. I think you know just one thing that that actually in our meeting today that you mm -hmm. that you brought up Elizabeth was kind of the aggregated benefit yeah. city and school mm -hmm. and so when I think about you know yes maybe we're in in disparate places but the aggregated benefit to do this right you know the city obviously <coughs> would bring would construct through appropriate public feedback and mm -hmm. and planned uh, zoning and uh, comprehensive <coughs> plan work that they, they develop a city <coughs> that continues to want people to come here mm -hmm. that benefits the school. Mm -hmm. The school by doing good planning and good you know metric analysis and program uh, um, you know reviews around what we want where we're at can benefit the city where people want it. you know so this is the kind of the correlation and I think you know you said it well kind of the aggregated mm -hmm. city school benefit and again, I think we also talk about we got to we got to clearly articulate what the problem or what what is the issue that we're trying to solve. Right. And so. And I think the baseline is part of that right. future problem because um, it, it it's you know we're not solving an obvious problem right now. We should be we should be identifying what the emerging issues are going to be, and and I think I think this board's done a pretty good job mm -hmm. of that with with John and David's support, but I think equally important is sort of what. Um, what we could like look like on a going forward basis. Yeah, and I think you you articulated it very well. All, all the the primary cost drivers. I think there's also the as the education mm -hmm. tools and the way we educate our students needs to continue to change is the other significant driver that if we hear, if we stay at this baseline, we don't <coughs> actually stay. We we move backwards by comparison to other districts, and that's yeah. that's another big big driver for me. Yeah, and, and we were hearing that loud and clear. I mean, families want their students to be competitive. Right. In, in you know a future that we don't you know really know what it looks like yet right. but but um, one of the I will say one of the concerns I've shared is that it's going to be difficult um, and and I guess I'm looking at it you know from my myself as a taxpayer and a homeowner and saying uh, if I'm approached by the school district to make an investment in a new school for instance um, so there's a, a bond out there, and we know our operational expenses will likely continue to increase. Right. Um, so I've already absorbed a lot from a, as a taxpayer, but it's going to be hard to articulate the benefit of a TIF district um, and that TIF revenue. And my one of my concerns that I have shared is um, that I think we as a district need to be very clear on um, what the trade-off is again for that aggregated taxpayer and recognize that we could put future school budget approvals at risk because they're going to stand completely independent of TIF revenue mm -hmm. that's realized at the city on the city side so that's where I feel like if we have the more information we might have up front to kind of say this is the ballpark trade-off even though it might show up in the form of, I mean, I'm hopeful at some point we can say it's a flat tax rate or um, or there might be a phase process where there are cost savings that could be, you know, accumulated to offset future expenses, things like that. Um, but that's, that's the work that's ahead. I would urge us to spend the time that's necessary to understand what the best vision we have, we can have for the district is and what the opportunities 
are mm -hmm. there before we do any speculating or even doing a lot of talking yeah. about the optimization potential of what's there because I think we need to know what's best for the district first. I think that's our primary responsibility. Yeah. And <coughs> if there are ways to achieve that um, in, 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 uh, in, through cooperation with, co collaboration with the city, that's great. It, you know, and if the city has great ideas that they want to send to us to think about, sure, we should consider them. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I think uh, one of the audience members who earlier made it very clear and it's totally correct in my mind that it is this this body's responsibility to deal with the school issues. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's nobody else's responsibility. Sure, we can take help. Sure, we look for collaboration. Mm -hmm. But it's our responsibility and we have to put the best effort forward that we can yeah. that we can Absolutely. muster. Yeah, and just for the for the benefit to remind the board, um, I know the conversation came up in the meeting about how much of the task force, even the inception of the task force and, and commission of the task force by the steering committee was driven by having an offer on the table, as it were. And um, for those of you who you know have served on the board, those conversations have been going on a lot longer than that, just relative to the strategic vision of the district. Um, I'm not sure we would have gotten to the point where we had this level of engagement by the community and this level of commitment by 13 representatives over a, a many week period or month period. So um, the, you know, the developer activity certainly served a purpose, but it did accelerate a process that was in place on the district yeah, side. Yeah, I think acceleration is the right word. We, it was out there as work product. We'd begun some preliminary stuff. David had done stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, this dates back years. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's an important piece. I, I, again, kind of uh, seconding what you said, you know, the 2008 work that the yeah. board did, and yeah. there was a large community gathering and mm -hmm. collaboration, and you know, that resulted. And I, it goes it goes back further than that around strategic planning and visioning mm -hmm. work that the district had done. Um, so, I do think that's kind of a, a an easy. Uh, conception that people walk away with, like it's because of that that right. you're doing this yeah. and that's, I think it's a good thing to keep clear yeah and and I, I guess also um, maybe I feel the need to add this too but I think there's a lot of um, there was a lot of discussion and a lot of emphasis on sort of the next community survey and my feeling is it's not one survey <laughs> it's, right. it's, I mean there'll be a lot Series of, of um, I, I'm anticipating a, that this board will have a lot of need to solicit community feedback uh -huh. as we go through you know our work plan going yeah. forward so yeah and, I, and I'll just make an observation that I, as much as I really respected the concern about you know the urgency part I think you know measured urgency as art put it and it <clears throat> you know is a significant driver in keeping momentum going mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't mean you're going fast but it may mean you're moving with purpose yes yeah. and i think that's the, that's yeah, the that's right tenor to set as well right. and, mm -hmm. I, and i do, i think yeah i think yeah. leveraging that momentum is very positive yes. um and not the not the least of which is i think there has been a pretty clear message um throughout this process that there is community um openness to even having the discussion mm -hmm. which hasn't always been in the past so uh, that that's worth taking advantage of if nothing else so I'm, I'm I'm not hearing any like really specific next steps for me again I want to be really clear about I think on um, you want to receive the final report although I, I think you pretty much know what it's gonna it's gonna say um, I'm not sure whether you would again there's some things that I can do around inquiry suggested options and next steps <coughs> um, plan for future meetings you know but I, I I don't want to get out ahead of you nor do mm -hmm. I want to be losing some well, momentum I, here. I so guess I yeah I'm, I, I don't want to speak for the rest of the board but I I do have an expectation that you and your team weigh in on the task force recommendations because I think Dan's comment around starting with the educational vision should be the driver and we really need to look f to your leadership to kind of um, not only react but to be proactive with the information that's okay. been shared through the report yeah i don't know how we go about doing this but i do think we need to put some effort into outlining major steps along the way yeah. and um, and i think early on that is going to have to be the question of just the core vision 
word is using the bit using the task force input as a good solid basis and a lot of very valuable information yep. and then trying to windage on top of that put on top of that what the internal energies and knowledge and intelligence of the school district is mm -hmm. to try to get us okay. that translated into something and then what are the steps that have to go beyond that community community yep. communication uh, mm -hmm. you know at what point in time do we translate that into some trial proposals or yeah, and I would say so to add to that, if there are specific um, dates that may be more opportunistic for us to hit than less, not mm -hmm. that they would necessarily be the deadline for our work, but are an awareness for us that if we were able to mm -hmm. do something at a certain time frame, it might benefit both sides. That'd be great to know. Yes, um, but know not that. a driver. Absolutely, it's good. You don't want to be caught missing something critical because you didn't know that. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Any other comments or questions on master planning? Sounds like a lot of work. Um, I think, Julie, you had a question that kind of came up in the form of the, um, the first steering committee report, which was there, there were some, um, I guess I'll call them baseline expenses or anticipated expenses from an operating standpoint associated with NEASC recommendations that may not be in the stewardship plan currently. So it, yeah, so basically the task force came up with these additional pretty significant amounts of money that needed to be spent both here at the middle school and at the high school that at least up until that point I'd never heard of those before and I'm I it's it was just curious to me about why that wasn't built into our stuff and and why we didn't at least or, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, why we, we didn't yeah. know about the recommendation. So I think, you know, a couple things. NEASC accreditation is something that we have continued to do, we think is important. Um, way back, it, go, it goes a bit back, mm -hmm. all the way back to when we bonded it back in 95, 96, to expand, for instance, based on the recommendation of cafeteria space and some other learning spaces at the high school. And so that's kind of been on. That's kind of been <coughs> evolving. Obviously, you know that bond and what happened to that. Um, not the 1995-96, the 2003 bond, I believe it was. Sorry for that. Can confusion. you just tell me, us what the? Can you do the acronym? New England, New England uh, I should know it, schools but. and colleges. Okay. You know, accreditation. Um, okay. Probably don't have all the right, but it's New England schools. Okay. Accreditation process. So. That's been brought to our attention. Certainly at the middle school, no. Expansion of the gym, those have been just noted discrepancies given the size and the population that it serves, for instance. The gym, there's no place for people to sit and watch a <coughs> middle school event, okay? So um, that wasn't a specific recommendation? It wasn't a specific recommendation at a NEASC. There was some recommendations, that, again, out of the high school that were cafeteria space, other learning spaces, which also opened up the discussion at the middle school. So um, anyway, those, that's really the, the impetus around the, the NEASC work. And they're, they're a body in and of themselves that recommend, kind of based on the continuum of the developing student, mm -hmm. what kind of spaces and learning exposures they should have. It's, a, it's, a, it's again, another benchmark. So. So does you? it change? Sorry, does no, it change your your um, accreditation status if you don't? I mean, it can co comply with some yep, of those. It recommendations? can, and again, a lot of schools, or not a lot, some schools, some high schools choose not to go through NEASC. So it's not a have to. Okay. It's an important component, though. Do we think that aligns itself appropriately with with our college, you know, admissions? It's an comp important component that often parents and colleges are communicating about. And currently it's been something that this district has valued to continue. Sure. Um, that may be something that we look <coughs> at in the future, but um, currently that's been something that we is have. That, is that a standard continued. that applies only to public schools? Um, no. Um, private schools can, can do the same if they so choose. Can. can um, as well as public schools. So I have to. So just uh, to follow up <coughs> on that question from Julie. So the the things that South Burlington has chosen not to take action on um, in a black and white sense, 
don't risk our accreditation or potentially could risk our accreditation? Could risk our, could risk our accreditation. Okay. All right. I think the accreditors are, you know, when, when they make those recommendations, you know, certainly when they come back for revisits, I mean, the period of time in which they would, would even think that a change can happen of, of a size, you know, big magnitude yeah, is yeah. certainly understood. When it's a programmatic thing, you know, obviously the expectations is that they should see that, otherwise they're going to render a pretty significant gotcha. recommendation or consequence <coughs> based on the accreditation. Okay. So that's helpful. There's more leniency on facility, although it continues to be recognized. So David, can I just ask one last question? So if if for instance the middle school expansion of the gym isn't it wasn't even really a recommendation, it was a, a note or whatever. It it seems like when you look at the task force financial piece that that as the baseline is not really accurate mm -hmm. then because you know it it's not it's not a firm recommendation it's not something we as a board have even talked about and so if you go off that which is a pretty significant amount of mm -hmm. money uh, I just feel like that's not yeah I, I I would concur with that I think that the you know the numbers came based, and I'm going to just generalize, they come out of kind of basic square footage cost mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. factors, and I don't want to say they're inaccurate, but there's a whole lot of other moving parts and operational expenses, potential cost savings, cost increases, with all of, you know, with everything moving. I, I think it is safe to say that there would be, need to be a whole lot more polished analysis before you could render any sort of a more certain direction and okay. decision so these these are I would say very very well, I don't know they're benchmarks that as we go down to determining what those next steps there's going to need to be refinement mm -hmm. um, wow. significant well, refinement that may, that and may be something then that you would include in your next mm -hmm. steps or recommendation which would be that there be kind of a status quo baseline, there might be a NEASC required mm -hmm. yeah. incremental investment and maybe a NEASC optional line before we start looking at the other, what, what would get layered on top of that. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a clear understanding of really what the baseline is. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions? No, thanks. All right, we'll move on to agenda item six, the superintendent's report. <coughs> so a couple things just to note here. Um, it's not often that you get big donations, but um, in this case there's a piano donation and John's articulated that and you, perhaps you've already read it. So it's a, it's a beautiful grand piano being gifted to the school. Certainly has, can be, used on an ongoing basis. Let me just pause. I don't know if there's any questions you have here. Obviously, we um, there's a process that we go through by receiving gifts and donations. Um, but I hope that process includes acknowledging to the donors. Yes. The gratitude. <laughs> yeah. And so you, you see in, in your in the report, John, uh, on my behalf, put together, you know, kind of the correspondence that went to both yeah. myself and Karsten mm -hmm. Slanter. On behalf of some of you know an employee, Gil, Gil Kelly, who mm. provided you know kind of a, as a liaison to the good work, and as a result of those good positive relationships and for working with kids, it's likely that this was this was part of the directed donation. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you that you know about it. It's an, a, a donation, and we obviously would certainly like to accept it. Mm -hmm. So wanting to just make you aware of that. And then the second part is, at the last meeting, we talked about common routes and the running of the farmer's market, if you recall. And there was a proposal around, obviously, we charge as part of our, our building use fee structure. They were being charged. And also in here, you, you see the, the, the <coughs> cost uh, that was associated with them doing that. And then the recommendation is um, you know, to, to ask them to be charged $100. Um, particularly in, in retrospect to the amount of services mm -hmm. and um, and essentially resources that they've given to the district. So we do think it's important that they do be charged. It's not something that we want to do on an ongoing going forward basis. It probably needs to be reevaluated every year depending on 
kind of <coughs> what's happening. Yeah. So, I want to David, I just want to say that I, you know, after listening to the to the history of that, I really think you handled that well. It's starting out with a position of conservative position, let them learn their way into it, have them prove the way. But I really do think that we've gotten to the right place. That this is in policy governance, your ability what to decide what to do and inform yeah. us. Thanks, Dan. So again, I don't know if there's any. Is the, there's questions. no action required on these items? No. Again, more important for me to just to inform you of closing that yeah. loop and yeah, Elizabeth at the last meeting, John and, John and uh, David brought in a history of what was oh, going right. on, mm -hmm. and they yeah. pointed out that uh, for historical reasons they had asked for the consent of the board to do to do what they did early on, yeah. and it really was you know we kind of came to the judgment in, in your absence that. Uh, it really was their turf. <laughs> yeah. That this was not something we wanted to be involved with all the time decision. or should yeah. be involved yeah. with all the time. Gotcha. But I chose to, you know, bring it back in this way to keep you to Elizabeth, keep you informed. Um, going back to the donation, would it? Uh, and I don't want to start a process that may be unwieldy. But is it? Would it be appropriate for uh, you as the chair to also do an acknowledgement on on this donation? We 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 certainly it seems can significant. do that. Significant. I just. Yeah. Yeah, it's a significant donation. We typically, and again, it can be so noted in the meeting tonight that, you know, thank you for informing us of the donation. Yeah. Yeah. And we generally, on behalf of the board, you know, let them okay. know that it was it came in front of the board and okay. the board, you know, graciously accepts your donation. Yeah. If you wanted to do something more personally, personal as a, you know, mm -hmm. as a from the board directly. Yeah, you know. I'm happy to write a note on behalf of the board. I think that directly. would be... Mm -hmm. It would be nice, I think. Sounds sensible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. More work, sorry. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't get delegated more you last want time. You give it to a busy person. <laughs> well, you, have you read the minutes yet? <laughs> <laughs> I did, actually. Uh, all right, we'll move on to agenda item seven. So, number seven, board development, and 4.2 is, is up, and it is listed as action, but may not, you may not be ready for that. This is your work. And as I often say, the job description or the essential functions of the job of the board. Um. I have to say, I read this and I have no <laughs> idea what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you've been. Well, then we have, we have some work to do. Maybe, well, huh? well, that's funny because I read it as the newest board member and said, "What are we supposed to do with this?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, it um, you know, I know we don't typically get into wordsmithing, but I felt like it didn't reflect in a plain English kind of way what we actually do as work. So, I mean, there were things around um, hiring. Uh, there were things around uh, the superintendent evaluation. I don't know if I saw that mm -hmm. in there specifically. Um, so I, I did struggle with this maybe being not so much out of date, but just um, understandable to the general public. Yeah. Three years old. I'll get to two thousand. <laughs> no, I know that was. Um, I don't know what. Other, well, well what I, mean, I, I think I think I think that it would be worth tabling this with the idea that uh, the uh, <coughs> board members try to add in what what tasks they think aren't included. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. such things as thinking on this uh, visioning thing and turning that into a plan and so on. Mm -hmm. I don't see where that's explicitly in there. It may be in there someplace, but I didn't mm -hmm. get it. So, and then, you know, there, I'm sure there are other things like the hiring thing of certain mm -hmm. categories and so on. Um, proving budgets, that kind of stuff. That's a good point. Would it be worth our time to reach out to the School Board Association to see if they have suggested language that they think is relatively standard and uh, reasonable mm -hmm. for boards? You, you certainly can, actually. This this was developed as a result of that. that. Okay. Now it's not. Mm -hmm. It's likely that there's been additional work and clarity. So I think it's always a good thing. I think you could direct me to get some other, you know, what's what are some other samples of pe yep. what people have maybe done mm -hmm. or are doing as a result. We have other policy governance partners that we have through <coughs> the SBA that are collaborating with us. You know that because we've, we've yep. done some of that work. Mm -hmm. And then I think there's also the opportunity that you just work you know, with that and with your desired clarity around right. what, what you want and 
And again, I often say, you know, as we look at job descriptions, I want job descriptions to reflect what are the essential functions of my job. So when a new board member comes on or a new mm -hmm. person comes into a position, does it read clearly around what my duties mm -hmm. are? And I yeah. think to your point, yeah. Pat, you know, maybe it's like, <clears throat> I, this doesn't really tell me what, what I'm expected to do. Yeah. And so what, we, what we've done under Karen's support and, and work with us is we've gone very clearly in our job what are the essential functions of your job? Yeah. We could do the same, <coughs> same formatting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are, you know, and how do you make this, you know, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's a good idea to look at what may be out there for other language. Mm -hmm. Because I do think you're right, Elizabeth, this is a little bit nebulous, like, really. I'm still trying to figure <laughs> out what an organizational <laughs> product is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we do want people just in general that read it to be able to glean what, what yeah. it is we do. And, and where we place priorities. Right. Yeah. See, it was fairly short job description, so that any new board member that would look at it would say, oh, that's no, easy. It's really short do. job. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we'll do some, maybe get some benchmarking, include feedback from the VSBA, um, mm -hmm. and maybe get that out before the next meeting mm -hmm. and have more of a working session. All right. That sounds like a plan. All right, we'll move on to setting the agenda for the July 29th meeting. So I'm, I just have to say I'm not going to be Yeah, so I this. think we, that's one of the, Delana and I talked briefly about this. So I think we have a couple of board members that are not there. Um, Pat and Julie, I think, are both out on the 29th, at least what we reported last is, time. Is, is that right? That is correct. And so we wanted to confirm that we have Dan, Elizabeth. July 29th, they should be here. Okay, so we're, we're good. It's the, mm -hmm. it's the meeting after that. that but I you're not. Can you. I That's think it's right. Martin that you need to check with. Okay. Just to so Dan and, and uh, Elizabeth are okay. We'll check on mm -hmm. Martin. Okay, so just stand by on that as far as okay. whether that stays confirmed or not, but it will be based on <coughs> Martin's availability. Um, we'll pull over the board job description. Yeah. Actually, Delano no, already has. It, We've got it continued. It also yeah. says a steering committee meeting that day. Uh, Is that right. So we'll let oh, no, that's oh. my error. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Because I think I heard earlier that the next steering committee meeting is not. We have not, not set. set. Well, no. We haven't set it. Thanks. So is the only thing we need to pull over is the board job description, 4.2? It, it, it is there and it's under, oh, it is, it's okay. just yep. like continued. And if you guys are going to talk about the special board work meeting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and two of us aren't going to be here, I wonder if you can just like send out dates so mm -hmm. that while we are here we can respond to that because, and then you guys can decide, I mean. Do it over email. So, so that could be more of a, a list. virtual. So we could actually, maybe we could firm up a date for that board work meeting. Right. And then have suggested agenda topics yep. prior to. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I think we probably should include, since that's the, I think that might be the last meeting before the City Fest, is we might want to talk about staffing mm -hmm. and uh, kind of content, what kind of feedback yep. we're looking for. So we'll add. Maybe we can do that after, within the master planning visioning, put it right after their city mm -hmm. fest. Yeah, I think, I think in that forum, not to derail us, I think we're going to have less control over the content and it's more of a, an availability for mm -hmm. whatever the content is that comes into the booth. Well, <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking we might want to think about having an aerial map yeah. available. I mean, we can drive yeah. it through having some materials. Yeah. I, I yes, think I that's the thing we ought to conversation about. ideas yeah. or something. People yeah. can come and ask, you know, mm -hmm. about master planning and visioning or mm -hmm. funding or something where well and we might want to think about some informal feedback around um, either you know experiences I mean I know from what I've seen of the branding work the council has done the school system is um, an integral part of the community identity so mm -hmm. I don't know if we shouldn't be thinking about I know one thing that came up with the task force is the notion that um, what has drawn people to, to South Burlington are neighborhood schools, but I think arguably 
you could say the entire school system is mm -hmm. a draw. So maybe right. it's as simple as asking that question and just yeah. getting kind of a tally board um, so that I, I'm, I, there may be just a way to inform ourselves on a real slice of information yeah. that would be helpful. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always interested and a little frustrated by some of what we heard tonight about, oh, I didn't know anything about this, <laughs> because we make such, I think Delana and you guys make such a good effort to get stuff out there. And I wonder if when people say that to you in the context of City Fest, you could try to find out right. how they would like to be communicated with, because I think that's kind of a constant problem for us in terms mm -hmm. of some people just feeling really uninformed. and. Maybe we're maybe there's a way we can do something. Well, that we're not and that doing. that would yeah. be worth discussing. Yeah, should we bring should we bring copies of the summary report and collect email addresses, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> things like that? Sure. Well, I think you should have copies of the summary report. I think there should also be. I don't know whether it's current, but we publish an annual report card for the schools. Mm -hmm. I think that ought to be available. Mm -hmm. I think it probably would be worthwhile to have some of those some of the maps that the. Uh, that the task force produced on mm -hmm. where, where we, I think the district actually produced it for the task force, right. where, where kids actually are located yes. relative to the yep. school, where their homes are relative to the school they go to, mm -hmm. because um, these are going to be things that they're going to be talked about, I think, in our other deliberations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, more, the more people know about it to begin with, the better questions we'll get. And There's always more, more you can do in the communication <coughs> sector. Yeah. 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 And uh, we know that from voting and, you know, our, our data that we did on our voting districts and, <coughs> and the participation and, yeah. and so, there's so a lot there's of always, material that can be brought in. And we, we can never, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I do think we do an adequate job, mm -hmm. you know, obviously the line yeah. and I'll our, you know, too. minutes and, but, but, you know, some people who may not get out or may have a very traditional pattern of where they go. May never, may never see it. Although you know, the other paper we think you know has done a good job for us, and we you know everybody gets that, but yeah. may not open the paper. No, I think, I think that we should promote the other paper as the place you should be looking, right. mm -hmm. because it is the one document that I think virtually every household gets. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, I mean, for example, I don't get the free press. Mm -hmm. I, when Julie sends me an article, I know there's something in the free press. <laughs> Otherwise, I didn't know that anything was in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, I do think, I, and you know, in that vein, I think go, I, as we go through this master planning process, I think it might be valuable to have, you know, a column or something saying, you know, an update from your superintendent. If it says from the board, nobody will want to yeah, read think it. But from you, people may want to read it. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. maybe you could bounce back and forth between the board and the, and the superintendent. Yeah. But, but I think something. something like that would be helpful, and I think it could be informative to people in what this visioning thing that's going on, helping people understand where things are going to be. Mm -hmm. Which gets me to another thing, and that is I think at some point in time we're going to have to acknowledge this this response to this task force, whatever we're going to call this thing going forward in the future agenda items, unless oh. it's not going to be handled in regular meetings, but a series right. of special I think, meetings. I think we can sunset after, you know, we, mm -hmm. we actually probably in the in the going forward we can remove it's, it's master prema planning premature to do it now but that's right i think after it has to the get 20th. acknowledged that's right either here or someplace right i don't know now whether i don't know whether it makes sense to do it within these meetings or to have a sequence of special meetings mm. okay mm -hmm. yeah and it's not necessarily mm -hmm. calling on like the task force you know we, we kind of put the master It'd be plan, nice if we could call it a different name yeah i know <laughs> okay yeah yeah it takes that it's as input but it's not the only input right, right. yeah good point Okay. okay. All right. Uh, anything else on the 29th meeting? I think we covered that. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, future mm -hmm. agenda mm -hmm. items. You know, I think I have. I think I may have to tell you that I'm not going to be here for the 29th. So can, I just don't know how to confirm that right now. No problem, Dan. We can. Which is going to be a problem for having a meeting, right? Yeah. yeah. So well, because even if Martin's here, then we're down to two. So we we then need to look at alternative dates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the problem is that it, it's at about it's either that date or the next date that, that I guess out. start getting involved in that uh, medical mm -hmm. procedure. And yes. Mm -hmm. Did we talk yeah. about moving a date up earlier in July? I could. This, this the, was the moved up I, date. This, in I could do the week before this. 
it's this week that I think I have a problem. I, so I could do that too. So what? Yeah, we might have a. So that would be the twenty um, second. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. July twenty second. Is there availability the twenty second? I don't. Not for Patrick. You think that when you are available, Dan? I think I'm available on twenty second. Yeah, I'm not available that day either. On the oh. Wednesday, but the rest of the week I am. And I'm. It doesn't have to be. Could be Tuesday. Could be Thursday. From my standpoint. So 21 or 23? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, David, from your perspective, would you rather have a meeting in July and try to get a quorum of the board, or do you think we do we want well, to? Well, I think I we, we can always, if there's always a need for, uh, you know, a, uh, <clears throat> you know what I'm going to say, a last minute hire, we mm -hmm. could do that, you know, through you with a voice, you know, a <clears throat> phone, a phone for critical stuff that needs mm -hmm. to get approved. So it may be better that we then just go to the August, right? The August first meeting. And no, I don't see anything urgent on the. Yeah, so it's fifth. People couldn't do that. Really. Oh, they. Several we had, people missing. I don't know. I, I'm, I would be out the fifth. Okay. Yeah. I don't think Martin was out. I'm out. August yeah. fifth. I'm here, but. What, yeah. Why don't we see if we can get an earlier July, even if it's not a Wednesday? Mm hmm. Uh -huh. So that week of the 20, 20th, mm -hmm. are you out the whole week, Patrick? I am in California the 20th, uh, I'll get back the late the 22nd, so I, in theory, could be around the 23rd. With jet lag. <laughs> I'm tired, but a present, yeah. yeah. So that week of the 20th, <laughs> Patrick's not available the 20th. I'm, he I'm here, but not on the Wednesday night. So let you. Yeah. So you're here on the 20th. So just go through the week. You could do 20, 21. Yep. I just can't do 22. I could do 23. And you could do 23 and 24. Well, yep. we don't. You want to come Friday night? I'm happy no. to do it. Fine. So you could do 23. Elizabeth, you're okay 20? Okay, yeah. The whole week, actually, I think right? so, yeah. And Dan, I'm you're... I'm okay. I, I think I'm okay that week. Any day. Any day that week. And Pat, you're only available 23. Correct. Yeah. So we can check with Martin. Otherwise, we get it gets dicey into August, right? Or the end of the week. The, that next, the week of the twenty seventh is problematic. When we get into August, <coughs> then we potentially Dan has conflict. And I've got kind of a two week two week con okay. conflict. Okay. So to schedule it the twenty third. I think so. I think that's that seems like the best plan right now, given what we've just. Anyway. So it's Thursday the twenty third. Twenty third. Third. Okay, so I'll confirm that to you when. And we'll, and we'll need check to Martin's. communicate with Martin. Yeah, okay. that's good. And that replaces which meeting? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Thank you. Okay, that's helpful. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. Any uh, future agenda items? Any comments? Questions? I think we have dates on most mm -hmm. items. There are four items in August. Right, which, <laughs> given our timeline right now. And and th there's a student activities update potentially in July. Is mm -hmm. that something that could be moved to the 23rd? Let's see. Yeah, it's, it's August. Yeah. So well, we might want to be taking a look at that August. Those are pretty beefy topics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll look. Okay, uh, the minutes of June 17th, any changes or comments? All right, seeing none, those are approved. And we'll move on to the consent agenda. Do you wanna just briefly cover that, David? Mm -hmm. So you, you do have uh, in, your, in your packet, you also have the, the hires. Um, <coughs> And the Finlayson is a result of some mm -hmm. changes that are happening, um, both as a result of the high school middle school need, and the and the Emily Gilmore the point three social studies was a discussion that happened at the last meeting, not about the individual but mm -hmm. about the position and the reason for the for the increase was a result of increasing 
uh, enrollment, particularly in the freshman and sophomore grades. And I, I believe Patrick went over that before you and it and are noted it's noted so this is the, the fill of that <coughs> of that approval are there more are, are there more fills to the to that night of approval no okay no was that right Delana? I, I don't i think we're, we're pretty oh you yeah, know i got my have the sheet actually so we've done the kindergarten at chamberlain that's already come through. Yeah, okay. you've done the point. This is the point three. You've done the point two in the math. The point two uh, in Japanese. The point two at Tuttle. And then the point six. So that's okay. So, so that's you're, done. you're done. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. And these are all one-year positions, correct? Yeah. So do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda with two new hires as proposed by administration? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes. All right. Now, agenda item 12, we have a lease resolution for computers, buses, and front-end loader. I think I left it that one. Yep. That one came by mail, correct? Yeah. So the um, last time you did the least <coughs> rates, mm -hmm. uh, I want to make sure people don't you know, get confused. But you you approved the least rate, mm -hmm. and then they'll, so this is the the actual action um, given the rate. <coughs> so um, do we have that? It's in the packet. I know that, mm -hmm. right, Delana? It's in yeah. Oh, <coughs> was that the table yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Did everybody need that? Uh, yeah. It was in the email, too, right? Yeah, got it. <coughs> Joe. So just to follow through on this, this is last time we saw the the, uh, the information and the, and the recommended uh, firm to get the lease from and mm -hmm. the rates, yeah, was, uh, the rates. It was and it was pending review by a legal review. Correct. Is that right? Yeah. Sure. And so this concludes. And it's back now, having had the legal review. Mm -hmm. So what you are looking for action on is an approval of a resolution to enter into a lease agreement with First Niagara Leasing. And uh, an attorney has reviewed the resolution provided by the lessor to enter into the lease arrangement with First Niagara and has made some minor revisions, which John included in the attachment. Uh, Mr. Fletcher advises there is a possibility that le the lesser may have other minor changes, and if so, a substitute form of resolution would be provided at the meeting, which we do not have. So were there no changes? There, at this time, there are no changes. Okay. That's correct. Um, and this includes bids that were provided and accepted at the June 17th meeting. Mm -hmm. On the road. Yeah. Gotcha. So, do I have a motion that I have one more question before we move to the motion. Mm -hmm. Under section three, the last sentence of that mm -hmm. section says, all other related contracts and agreements necessary and incidental to the equipment leases are hereby authorized. I, I Just a due diligence question, what is that really in reference to? What, other, what potential other contracts and agreements that are necessary? that we're authorizing by doing this only only related to this very specific um, so John or I as a result of your approval on behalf of the leasing are authorized to negotiate based on the approval so we I mean we can't go outside of your uh, the amounts right so it, one of my assumptions was if there's sub agreements like that go like there's uh, a software license agreement with a laptop that then 
we're not getting that, but we're 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 obliged to follow that agreement because it comes with the computers. It, those types of things. I just really want to kind of just make sure I was clear what that meant. I think I'm I'm satisfied. So. Yeah, if you get too detailed on me on the legal lease stuff, I'm I'm gonna I, I would have to come back to you on some of the. That's okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So with that, do we have a motion to approve the? lease resolution for computers, buses, and front-end loader through First Niagara Leasing. I'll also move. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And the motion passes. No, I'll just make a little, little snide little comment here. <laughs> <laughs> I note that some of these things are to the, to the to the pennies. Yeah. But the last one doesn't have any pennies. anything after a decimal point. <laughs> Not even zero zero. Looking for consistency. Oh, the the wheelchair <laughs> lift. Sure. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> that's just. A, just I'm just being a pain in the neck. I keep looking at the number. The engineer. See, why does that number look different from all the other numbers? Well, that was a <laughs> test by the accountant to see if you were reading the document. <laughs> well, I think that happens now and then. Any uh, questions or comments on AP Orders 47 and 48? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item 14. We have an AP Order check to the Howard Center in the amount of $107,143.17. So it seems to me that we just did one of these. That just the circumstance of timing. I mean, I thought they came they did just do quarterly. Or yeah, it's the way like it's the way the it's the way the quarterly the cycles go. Just so we way. ended it. We ended a year, and we're we're beginning it. We're beginning a year. So it's just so a juxtaposition the way the cycle. of the yeah, beginning and the end. Yeah. So I wouldn't get. Okay. I understand the concern of the close proximity of the two, but we're it just we're, seems we're like jumping we just did it, That's all. Yeah. yeah. I know they come up yeah. periodically, but mm -hmm. it seemed like. I could I can find out for you you know just so you know kind of the frequency we can I'll inform you of what those what those are but you know we're on I just want to know it's not a second payment of the, mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. same to the same invoice that's all yep <laughs> so can I have a motion to approve the AP order check to Howard Center so moved second any questions all in favor Aye. 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 all right motion passes We'll take a minute to fill out the board self-evaluation and pass it to Julie, your standing clerk. I have so many new jobs this summer. Report out? Yeah. Oh, I sorry. The answers. Okay. That's one for you to send. So, all agrees on board meeting evaluation, with the exception of a couple no opinions, just based on the board's established linkage with owners um, and also. The board, including staff, students, and community members, in their discussion for future agenda items, and all agrees <coughs> for the superintendent feedback as well. Easy one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn and go into executive session for the purposes of discussing a legal matter, potential legal proceedings regarding personnel? legal matter regarding real estate, transaction discussion, and discussion regarding labor negotiations with teachers and support staff where premature general public knowledge would clearly place the board at substantial disadvantage. So, so moved. Have a second? second. We are adjourned and we will pick up an executive session. We'll in go into our five. conference room.